people of Reddit, what is your best ghost slash paranormal experience story? I've had a bunch, but one that stands out was probably the time my then youngest son had gotten me up crying about a bad dream he was having at 3 a.m. He was four at the time. I calmed him down then he told me he's hungry, so we go to the kitchen for a snack. He's sitting there eating cereal when he just kind of looks up and then casually tells me the boy who woke him up is sitting in the corner crying, and he nods to an empty corner of the room by the table where we're seated. I asked him why the kid is crying, just kind of humoring him when he tells me. His mommy crashed the car up the road and now he's trying to figure out what's going on. He woke me up, please tell him to go. So me thinking it's my kid still shook from the bad dream look at the corner and say, Hey kid, go back to your mom. We keep sitting there, and my son finishes his cereal and hands me the bowl. Just kind of joking around I ask him if it worked and the kid left. And he looks at me really seriously and say, Yes, he told me the ambulance is coming so it's okay. They're all dead anyways. And not even a minute later a string of cop cars and an ambulance go past our house, sirens blazing. And I got this feeling of the most intense dread while the hair stood up on the back of my neck. I shook it off, told myself it was just a kid's imagination and coincidence we went back to bed. A few days later my neighbor tells me all about the big wreck a mile up the street from us where some lady was going too fast and flipped the car coming around a curve and no one survived. At 3 o'clock in the morning on the night my kid had woken me up, I didn't dare ask her if a little boy was in the car. Many years ago I was working in a shop, and an old lady had purchased several bags of shopping. It was a little icy outside and I knew the lady lived less than 100 yards away from the shop, so I offered to take her shopping home for her. She was shocked that I would offer, and ever so grateful. On the way to her house she kept saying thank you to me. I told her it was no problem and I was happy to help. She said she wished more people like me were helpful etc etc. As we reached her door, she opened it and stepped away so I could enter. I told her that I was okay holding the bags and she should go in the house and get out the cold. She thanked me again and stepped in the doorway and took a few steps down the hall. I walked in behind her and put the shopping bags on the floor. I asked her if she wanted me to help her put things away and she insisted I had done enough and thanked me again and again. I stepped outside and turned round to say bye to her. As she was closing the door she said, Thank you young man. I will watch over your soul from heaven. A few days later she was found dead in her home, in the hallway, next to a few bags of slowly rotting shopping. I was never very close to my grandfather. I barely remember ever having much to talk with him, but my parents say I used to talk to him a lot as a child. Anyway, when he died I didn't really know much about him, other than that he was the patriarch of the family and everybody respected him. I was barely 10 years old then, and was supposed to stay at an aunt's house. Sneaky that I was, I managed to follow my mother when she left for my grandfather's house, unaware that I was a few steps behind her. Anyway, the ceremony starts. There's a lot of crying and soon four people including my father, my uncles and someone I cannot now remember carry the body on top of a structure made of bamboo and wood. They chant throughout the way, nobody noticed that I was following them. They reach the cemetery. There's a lot of crying and I got bored standing at a distance. It's almost dusk and sit, weirdly, on a nearby platform. I would later come to know that it is sort of a memorial for the deceased. Sometime between all this is happening I fall asleep. Hours go by and when I wake up there is no one. Just the last flames burning through pieces of wood. I panic. I look around to see if there's anyone, but there's no one. I start running towards the pyre hoping perhaps some of my relatives might spot me by the fire and get hold of me. Again no one. I start crying. I look around to see if I can find my way to the street. Cemetery was on the outskirts of the town, and it was huge to my tiny mind. Rows after rows of those memorials I mentioned earlier. It's almost dark, and I can hear animals howling at a distance. While all this is happening I have a creepy feeling that I am being watched. It sends a shiver down my spine, and to this I don't remember ever being so shit scared. It was such a dark and nauseating feeling, a sense of impeding doom. I cry louder and start running. Little did I know that I was running deeper into the cemetery, farther from the road that would take me home. I reach the edge of the open ground and catch my breath near the tree line. I can hear faint voices coming from beyond the silhouette of the trees in front of me. Perhaps someone might be returning after gathering wood from there. 
I am again hit with this nauseating feeling and it's stronger now. To top it all, every time I walk or run it felt like I could hear footsteps. Like someone right behind me. I turned around several times yet found no one. I was so afraid at that point that I thought I might die. I took a leap of faith and ran towards the trees. The sound of footsteps behind me grew louder and it seemed like whoever it was near. Almost at arm's length. Like they could just reach out and catch hold of me. I am audibly sobbing and shouting for help. There's barely any light, but I remember hearing people in the distance. Suddenly, I'm in a clearing and see there's a community pond with a bathing area. I can see some people in my family and I ran towards. No matter how loud I tried to cry there was no sound coming out of my mouth. Finally, an aunt saw me and ran towards me. The last thing I remember before fainting is a hand on my shoulder and my body almost freezing on the spot. I was sick for a week after that, had nightmares for years, and in general stopped going to my grandfather's house or even the town. To this day, I find it difficult sleeping in the dark and sometimes wake up with a cold sweat and a creepy feeling on my shoulder like someone was holding on to me. This isn't my story directly, more my mother's story. When she was seven or eight months pregnant with me, she would accompany my biological father to the local stage theater where he acted in various productions for rehearsals. One job she had taken on on her own, even months or years before she became pregnant, was to sit in various places in the house and take notes. She would sit in a few seats on different sides of main level, including on the left side, right side, center, the row right behind the orchestra pit, and even in the very back row. She would go up into the balcony and sit in a few seats up there, and in some of the box seats on either side of the theater. She sat in these areas, noting how the sets looked and how the actors looked on their marks from her angle. She would note if the orchestra sounded too loud you couldn't hear the actors singing, for musicals like The Music Man or Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, or were too quiet. She would pass these notes on to the director, producer, and other people who would need them. The set designer would get notes like, tree-blocking view of Charlie Brown on stage left. The orchestra conductor would have gotten a note like, clarinets too loud for wedding march slash sunrise sunset, from Fiddler on the Roof. One particular night as rehearsal was starting to wrap up, my mom, being mewy ancient with me, got up from her seat. As her feet were now hidden by her belly, it was difficult to see where she was walking. Even more so since the lights in the house hadn't come up yet. Heading down a flight of stairs, she took a misstep and almost fell over when she felt somebody take a strong, firm grip on her upper arm and pulled her back. She felt that same grip suddenly pull her forward but very gently, and it never released until she got to the landing near the exit. She turned to thank the person who helped her down, but there was nobody there. My BF moved in, and after a few years, we got married. I talk about these things and he'd just look at me never saying too much about any of it. He traveled quite a bit for work, so I was home alone a lot. One night, I was on my computer, listening to music and playing games. Plain as day, I was tapped from behind on the right shoulder three times. I screamed and jumped up, turned around, and nothing slash no one was there. Scared the crap out of me. I told my, now, husband about it, and then he started opening up about the shadows he'd see moving around in my office. He talked about the footsteps he'd hear in the house when he was alone. The tapping on my shoulder happened one other time after that. When we were moving out of the house and it was pretty much empty, I was there alone cleaning and I heard the footsteps he talked about. Whatever or whoever was there started to feel more menacing towards the end of our time there. I loved the house but was pretty glad when we left. I've got a few from my grandparents' ranch. The original house was built in the early 1800s and the graveyard from the original family is still there. When my family first bought the property, the previous owners were still living there for a few weeks until they moved. My grandpa was out riding around and saw a guy from a distance dressed in slacks and a white shirt slash suspenders. My grandpa assumed it was the previous owner so he drove up to say hi. As he got closer, the guy walked behind a bush and seemingly disappeared into thin air. He told the previous owner about it and he asked, was he wearing a white shirt and suspenders? Apparently they've seen him a lot wandering around in the evening, almost always where my grandpa saw him too. A few months later when I first visited, me and my cousin were playing PS2 in the living room around midnight. There is a huge sliding glass door facing the backyard and barn. 
I notice two people walking around outside with what looks like rifles and Civil War caps. It looked like they were marching almost. Eventually, they kept going into the darkness while me and my cousin were shitting ourselves in silence. Nothing really happened for the next few years besides footsteps and weird feelings. I would hear super loud footsteps at night and assume it's someone walking into the kitchen. I got creeped out so if someone else was awake I would take that opportunity to go get food. When I realized no one else was awake, I ran back into my room LMAO. Fast forward to when I lived there during college. I had my own little cabin down the road and it was really creepy, but cool. One night I had a friend over, and we were up pretty late. We heard some footsteps on the gravel outside, and then louder footsteps on the front porch. Then I saw a silhouette of someone through the window walking around. I jumped up to go make sure it wasn't some meth head, but when I walked out front there was nobody there. And it's an open area, so there would be no place for anyone to run or hide. Safe to say we didn't get any sleep that night. That's about all the super creepy stories I have, but plenty of your typical paranormal things have happened over the years. This was on the Devil's Backbone in Texas BTW. If you know the stories of that area, you know it's a creepy ass place. In 2012, my grandmother suffered a major stroke resulting in hospice in her home with her children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren by her side. Friends and family were able to come by freely and spend time with her. I was very close to my grandma and was lucky to be able to share much of this time with her. For anyone that has ever been through hospice with a loved one, you will understand how hard this type of thing can be. One night I was sitting at home in my office catching up on some work when all of a sudden the room filled with the scent of perfume. I'm not talking about a faint smell. I'm saying it was very distinctive and strong throughout the entire room. I stopped everything I was doing and said out loud to myself, something is wrong, that is Graham. I had not spoken to my family that day, but felt an urgent need to send a text message to my uncle, whom was staying with her, to ask, you guys okay? This was at 11.20 p.m. I got a response right away saying, might want to come say goodbye. Not okay. I quickly rushed over. Upon arrival, the living room where my family was congregated was very silent filled with blank faces. Without saying anything I walked straight to my grandmother and kissed her on the forehead, saying I love her. She was still warm, but no longer breathing. I told my uncle that I was there because grandma had brought me there. I asked when she passed and he replied saying 5 minutes before I sent my text. This puts the perfume in my office at nearly the exact same moment. Now, I'm going to say that I was born into an Irish Catholic family, but I am in no way a religious person. I would have been the first person to discount this type of story if you told it to me. But, I must say, this experience had me thinking that there really is something more out there. I felt it. My mother's story. I've no reason to doubt her, and she's never told another or been concerned with the supernatural. She does have a vaguely spiritual streak, but that's all. Mostly, she's pretty no-nonsense. When she retired, she got heavily into family history. At some point, she obtained the diary of my dad's mother, who'd passed perhaps 20 years previously, who we all called Nan. Nan had been a very stiff and proper English type, called everyone dear, used adjectives like terribly and perfectly dreadful and was always relentlessly formal and seemed to be slightly offended at all times. She was also an intensely private person and never wanted anyone knowing her business. So one night my dad was away and my mother, home alone, sits down with the diary and starts going through it. It starts raining, nothing unusual since they live on the coast. She gets up and closes a few windows, goes back to the diary. The rain turns into a storm. It gets windy. She goes to the other room and shuts the windows there. Comes back to the diary. A few more minutes go by. She's been looking at the diary for maybe 15 minutes at this point. Suddenly, the intercom to her right bursts to life at full volume with just static coming from the speaker. They live in a three-story house on the side of a hill that was originally built by an electrician. So there are a million lights, power points on every wall and every room has an intercom. After recovering from the fright, she turns off the intercom. The one in the next room is still going full blast. She gets up and shuts that off and can hear the rest of the house downstairs still going. Every intercom. She heads down to the middle level where the master unit is and turns the intercom off. She's heading upstairs when she notices all the pictures on the walls 
My mother is heavily into hanging things on the walls. Big, small, paintings, family photos, there's a lot of frames on the walls, are all askew. All at similar angles, not random. Meanwhile, the storm has increased. The floor she is on is lined the length of the house on one side with timber framed windows. Even the tops of the windows are wet with rain, which rarely happens and takes a proper storm to do. As she stood there taking this all in, what she can only describe as an intense gust of wind rattles the windows from one end of the house to the other as if a speeding train went past on the balcony outside. Instead of fleeing into the night in search of a hotel room and real estate agent as I would have done, she walks calmly upstairs, calmly shuts the diary, calmly puts it in a cupboard, shuts the cupboard, says, sorry, Nan, to the empty room and goes to make a cup of tea. The storm dies down. She writes all the pictures. That's that. Here's the kicker. Someone from her work lives in the same street. Like, ten houses away. When she sees him the next day, she mentions the storm. What storm? Comes the reply. She's like, what do you mean what storm? I'm talking about the gale force storm we had last night. The guy looks at her funny and says he would have known if there was a storm since they had dinner on the balcony that night, and there wasn't a storm at any point. Reading this back it sounds completely made up. I can only swear it isn't. I lack the imagination to make up something like this. Shout out to Nan if she's somehow reading this. I promise I won't be reading your diary.